Hi everybody, welcome today to today's Keeper Chat. I'm Keeper Eric alongside Keeper Grace again. And today we're going to talk about pythons, which are a type of snake. They can come in various sizes. And we've got two on display right here. We've got our reticulated python. She's behind the glass. She's very large. And then the smaller one is called a Timor python. And they're a little bit smaller. So the reticulated python's name is Nani. And she is uh, about seven and a half years old. She'll get to maybe 25 or 30 here at the zoo. Right now she's about 16 feet nine inches and she uh, weighs about 166 pounds. Now when they uh, get fully grown, reticulated pythons can be 20 to 25 feet. The world record is 33 and um, that's the biggest snake that's uh, ever been found, is a 33-foot snake. So the reticulated python is the largest species. And as you can see, they get pretty big around too. They're not real long and thin. Uh, she does not do much all day. Those lar large snakes like uh, pythons or even anacondas will spend a lot of their time just resting and wa waiting for prey to come along. And they live in tropical areas, so they don't need it to be they don't need to eat very often. They, um, we feed ours about every three weeks. She'll get 20 pounds of rabbits or so. We're getting a glare, uh-oh. How's that? Good. And so it also takes them a long time to digest that food. Their metabolisms are a lot slower than ours are. So they, uh, well, we will digest food in a couple hours or a day at the most. It'll take her a couple weeks to fully digest her last meal. Now the, um, we think right now she is opaque, which means that she's getting ready to shed her skin. Reptiles grow their entire lives, but their skin doesn't grow like ours grows. So what they need to do is shed their skin uh, when they outgrow it. So something like a lizard will have their skin come off in flakes or sheets, but a snake will shed its entire skin at once. And that'll take her uh, about two weeks before she's um, fully ready to shed. And so for right now, she's gonna lay there, she's not gonna do much. And then one afternoon or one evening, she'll decide it's time to shed and she'll um, crawl in the water and get wet and that'll help her slough the skin off and she'll just um, start crawling out of it from her nose and the rest of it comes off inside out like taking off a sock from the top down. The Timor python is very similar but doesn't get anywhere near as big. Right now the Timor is about eight and a half feet long and about 14 and a half pounds and that's about as big as it's going to get. Um, he's 12 years old. He'll live to be 25 or 30 as well. Uh, so he's pretty much full grown. He might keep growing a little bit as he gets bigger, but he's not getting much better, too much bigger. Both of these animals come from Southeast Asia. Reticulated pythons uh, from India all the way over to Indonesia. And Timor pythons are found not on the island of Timor actually, but uh, close by islands in Indonesia. So I know you guys have a ton of questions. Yes, yeah, so, well, actually, the, the main question we have right now, um, does she have a name? Does she have, the, the reticulated python's name is Nani, and the Timor python doesn't really have a name right now. We just call him. I just call him Timor. Timor, yeah, <laughs> that's his name. Um, Sarah would like to know, has the female ever had babies? As far as I know, she never has. I don't think she... I think they used her for a breeder from the place that we had Did got her open? from. That's why she's so big. Yes. Well, we um, we got her, let's see, about four years ago. Is that right? Five years ago? Four, four years ago. Four years ago. Okay. And um, I don't know much of her history before then. Uh, she did come from a reptile breeder in, I think, Texas. I think that's right. Texas, so, Oklahoma. Uh, I'm not quite sure. I'm sure somebody else here knows a little bit more about her, but... Uh, she's definitely not bred here. Right. Well, that kind of leads us to Allison's question. Have we ever had any snake babies at the zoo? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Not to my not, knowledge. Not since I've been here. I've been here about 14 years, and we've never had any snake babies. 
of any species. How do you tell the gender of a snake? How do you tell the gender of a snake? That's a great question. Um, to tell the gender of a snake, you use a probe. And the, so uh, snakes are a lot like birds in that they have a, what's called a cloaca. So we have a hole that, or an orifice or whatever scientific word you want to use, where our <laughs> solid waste comes out and one where our liquid waste comes out. And snakes and birds have one hole where everything comes out. So that includes all their reproductive stuff. So the, the snake has a vent in its back, or a cloaca, and you can stick a probe in there and measure how far the probe goes. Now the females, is the, fe the, the opening inside the vent, the cavity in there is going to be very small for a female, and it's going to be a lot larger for a male because he's got to fit his hemipenes in there, and those are the organs he uses for reproduction. So when you stick the probe in, you can kind of count how many um, scales it goes in, and if it's a certain number of scales, it's a male, and if it's uh, lower than that, it's a female. Wow. We have somebody watching from Rwanda. That's cool. Awesome. Thanks for watching. <laughs> um, Lincoln, age eight, would like to know, how long does it take for a snake to shed its skin? How long does it take? Well, a snake will go opaque or start to show signs that it's going to start shedding its skin. And anywhere from a week to maybe two weeks later, it will finally start to shed. And once it starts, it only takes usually a couple minutes. If it's a real good shed, it might be three or four minutes. It just literally hooks that, uh, the old skin on a log or a rock and starts um, crawling out of it. And it just keeps going and the skin all comes off in one big bunch. Yes, yeah, so you can see why we have, um, in the retake enclosure, we have this log across her exhibit right now to help her. She'll run across that to get some of her skin off. Yeah. Probably next week. Um, Eden, age 10, would like to know, can snakes, oh, my thing just jumped. Can snakes climb on things like trees and walls? Yeah, that's a great question. A lot of snakes can climb. And we have, can we, you want to do the branches? So the yeah. branches. So we have all these branches up here, and our, our reticulated python will climb up on those branches. She will get her entire body off the ground and be up there. So a lot of snakes like to spend their time on the ground. Uh, just because it's a, it's a safer place and they're more likely to encounter prey that will come by. But there are some snakes, uh, tree boas for example, that spend most of their time in the trees and eat things like birds and things like that. Ooh, Christy has a good question. So are either of these snakes dangerous or poisonous? Well, here's a good, a good answer is no snake is poisonous. Poisonous means that there's a toxin in their body that you have to ingest to make you sick. So like bleach is poisonous, or poison dart frogs have a poison on their skin that makes you sick, so they're poisonous. When you're talking about a tarantula or a snake that injects their venom, we call them venomous. And that means that it gets into your bloodstream and it makes you sick that way. So here's a good way to remember it. If you bite it and get sick, that's poison. It, if it, it bites you and you get sick, that's venomous. Neither one of these animals is venomous. The only venomous reptiles we have at the zoo are the Gila monsters. And we take very extra special precautions around there to make sure we never get bit because we don't want to have to go to the hospital and um, be monitored for getting the venom in our bloodstream. Now, are they dangerous? Uh, they can be, yes. So anything with a mouth can bite. And snakes have large mouths with a bunch of teeth. And their teeth usually uh, aim backwards. So when they grab prey and they hold on to the prey, it doesn't slip out easily. They've got their teeth going backwards, which help keep the prey in their mouth. So if one of these snakes would bite you, it would sink its teeth into you, and then it would hurt and you would bleed, and then and with a big snake like the reticulated python, she would start to wrap around you too. And what pythons do, the way they kill their prey because they don't have any venom, is to wrap around their prey and start to squeeze. And eventually they squeeze so tightly that their prey has a heart attack and dies. 
and that's how they kill it. Right. You kind of answered the next couple questions I was going to ask you. Case in age six would like to know how much food they eat. How much food they eat. The reticulated python, about every three to four weeks, will get um, about 20 pounds of rabbits, uh, which she needs something really big to eat. And then the Timor python... And we every... feed frozen thawed stuff. Yes, nothing we feed here is live. We get it from a supplier and it's already frozen when it comes to us. Because it's not really fair to the prey animal to uh, suffer getting bit. And I feel like strangled. she's... The retake, she's also kind of a slow eater, so that wouldn't be very nice. <laughs> right. She's a slow eater. And then one thing you have to watch out with snakes is the prey items. So your mice or your rats or your rabbits... Uh, they could start fighting back and hurt your animal, or they could uh, start to chew on them. Especially rats are good at that. If the snake, the snakes don't have a really good pain sensor system, so if a rat starts to chew on it, sometimes the snakes don't really know what's going on, and you can end up with a snake that's half eaten by the morning from the rat. So that's why we should always feed um, dead prey. Right, and then uh, Sarah asks, what would be a special treat for the snakes? Uh, snakes are interesting in that they, they're pretty simple animals. Right. And just getting fed is a treat for them because we, we do it so infrequently. So we tried, um, we got some piglets one time and she wasn't terribly excited. She ate, she ate one of the little ones. She ate yeah. a piglet. Um, but overall, just feeding her rabbits is a good treat. Um, Ryan asks, will the python attack us or only if we scare it? That's a good question. Uh, if you startle it, it'll, it could certainly attack you. Uh, it, even though she's a very big snake, uh, we can still be very dangerous to her. So she doesn't really want to strike unless she feels really threatened. So will she just jump at us when we open the door? Typically not. But if we start messing with her and she feels like she's threatened, she will protect herself. And that's the same thing with the Timor Python. Just normally going in and doing a normal job, it's not going to hurt you. But if you start messing with it, yes, it can hurt you. Um, Garrett, age 12, asking how fast can the snakes be? Oh, how fast are the snakes? Goodness. I don't know that I, I, don't know that I have a, like, a number. Yeah, I'm sure we could look up a number. We, they cannot outrun us. They are quick, but um, I'm never concerned about putting a snake like her on the ground and, and having her uh, disappear before I can catch up to her. A lot of animals are much faster than us. Um, now, I will say that when they strike, that's amazingly fast. Um, when, it, when a snake strikes at you, you have very little time to react. So what they lack in being able to quote unquote run quickly or move quickly in a linear pattern, they make up for in their ability to strike. Um, Paxton, age six, would like to know if the python wraps around things and what. The, the, <laughs> you could have seen the, us trying to get the Timor out. <laughs> the, the Timor python didn't want to come out, so it was wrapped around Grace's arm. It was wrapped around the tree in its exhibit. Anything. So yeah, they, they do wrap around stuff. That's uh, how they climb, is they find something to wrap around and they use the um, friction and the body tension to uh, whoops, whoops. Get out there to climb up. Uh, and then of course they wrap around their prey as well. And then uh, like the Timor did, if it doesn't want to go someplace and someone's trying to get it to move, it will wrap around whatever it can find to try to anchor itself in. And then Harry, AJ, we kind of, uh, how, how are they able to climb and how does it work? Right. Let's see if we can get Let's the see if you can see. see our snake hook. So Eric's got a, a big old snake hook. It's a bit overkill for the Timor. Um, this is actually the reticulated python snake hook. Let's put it on the bench. Are you going to put him on the bench? Yeah. We'll have him on the bench. Hopefully. So hopefully we can see. Uh, he, he likes the window. See if we can see him using his muscles to wrap around the bench. No, he wants to fall. He wants to fall. No. Okay. <laughs> Don't climb up, Grace. Maybe we can get him to climb up again. Whoops. That's my foot. You gonna climb? Just 
Does anybody have any Maybe. other questions? Yeah. There he goes. Maybe. He's going to go back up to the window. He's being stubborn. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Animals never do what you want them to do on, on command. So. So something fun we. Um, yeah, let's show them. We can show. Wait. Uh, I'll stand here. Okay, you make a stand over here. Yeah, and you go stand over there. We'll show you. So this. So from me to Eric, that's about how long um, the reticulated python is. She's sixteen point nine inches. Sixteen feet. 16 feet 9 inches yeah so also you guys a great social distance, distance right that is a good social you distance see this is a good distance remember to stand, <laughs> stand a nani away from your friends right stand stand a nani distance away from your friends <laughs> all right we'll move down yeah we'll move down and we'll show you how long the timor is this is about 8 feet 8 and a half feet so this is the minimum social distancing. Right, this is your minimum social distancing away from <laughs> Does anybody have any other questions? Will it an attack, will a uh, tray age eight, will a snake attack an animal that is sleeping? Um, oh. A lot of snakes um, like to grab things that are moving. It's easier for them to see. Um, it might attack something. Usually snakes lie in wait and wait for the prey to come to them as opposed to looking for it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Christy, does it smell with their tongue? Oh, that's a great question. That's one of my favorite things about snakes is uh, you can see the Timor sticking its tongue out Let right now. Let me go on the side. Let me get out of your way. I have to show the mess he made on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> Why did he go to the bathroom? So now he stopped. Uh, on the roof of their mouths, snakes have a, an organ called a Jacobson's organ. And that's not something that we have, but tigers have it and a lot of other animals have it. And what a Jacobson's organ does is senses chemicals in the air, things like pheromones that we're giving off that other animals are giving off. So it's, it's kind of like a smell, but it's sensing all of these, these chemicals that we can't smell or sense. And that's why he's sticking his tongue in and out. So he's going to know if there's a prey item around. He's going to know if there's a person around um, or if there's another snake around or something like that. So that's why they stick their tongues in and out because they're bringing those pheromones from the air into their Jacobson's organ. And the tiger, if you ever see the tiger, he will wrinkle up his nose and kind of make a, I don't know, it's kind of like a hacking noise almost. <laughs> and that, it's, called, it's called the Fleming response. And what he's trying to do is he's, when the tiger does that, he's trying to get his, the pheromones to his Jacobson's organ. Um, JC's asking, how big are the python's teeth? How big are their teeth? Um, I've seen the reticulated python's teeth and I, it was... i say the fangs are a couple inches long. Yeah. And then they've got a ton of, of smaller teeth in their mouth. And those are going to be just, you know, half an inch or something. But all of those, the fangs are kind of to dig in and all the little ones are just to kind of help out and help keep the prey items. So we'll just answer just a couple more questions here. Um, LCH7, when they're curled up, are they always sleeping? Uh, that's a good question. I would say no. I would say a lot of times they're just hanging out. Snakes don't like to move. A whole lot because they don't really need to we need to move around to find food and to get water and uh, because we get bored but snakes depend on staying still to catch their prey so if they're always moving around they're gonna make noise and they're gonna scare away any prey that might be around so just because they're sitting still doesn't mean that they are asleep and remember that snakes don't have eyelids either so when you see their eyes open, it doesn't mean they're awake because they don't have eyelids to close when they go to sleep. Um, Alexis would like to know, how long do reticulated pythons live? How long do they live? Reticulated pythons in the zoo will live 
25 or 30 years maybe. In the wild, it might be 15 or so. Um, and then the last two will say um, how, oh, where did the question go? Um, I think the question was how, how big of a prey item can the snakes eat? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, a reticulated python can eat something as big as a large pig or a small deer, which is nose. <laughs> one of the things they would catch in the wild. Uh, we don't like to feed them anything too big uh, because it can cause problems and we don't want to feed them so much that they don't have to eat for a couple months. We want to make sure that they're feeding every couple months. Uh, something like a teamwork python would probably take uh, maybe like a large rabbit would be about as big as it would take. Do we do lifespan? Some people are asking about lifespan. Yeah, let, let me be. There's a good climb. Lifespan good for climb. the Timors, again, 20, 25 years. And lifespan for the reticulated is about 25 or 30. All right. So um, I think we'll wrap it up now. If we haven't gotten to your question, um, we will answer later in the comments. Um, oh, they just wanted to be reminded how long each of the snakes were so that how they long? could. Um, Timor, eight and a half yeah. feet, and reticulated python is 16 feet, nine inches. All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, we've got the donate button on the bottom. And tomorrow, I think we're going to do our 1030 chat about snow, snow leopards. Snow leopards is tomorrow. So tune in. That one's going to be pretty cool. Stay safe, guys.